Hi and welcome to another episode of Reaper TV. In this video, we're going to be checking out how we can move on from the original part one of this video series on creating and recording a song. So we've taken a look in the first part how to put the scratch tracks down for the guitar to record the basic left and right pan guitars and how to put a simple basic drum beat to that. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can add the bass into this and how we can start to flesh things out to just get everything sounding just a little bit better before we move on and start structuring the rest of the song. So let's take a look at all those different topics right now. So if you haven't watched part one of this video series, I'd recommend checking that out before doing this video. And I'll put a link in the description below and also up on the right hand side right now. So you can click and go and take a look at that. Once you've viewed that, come on back and we'll take a look at moving on to the second step. For everybody that's seen the first part of it, let's move on. Okay, so we've got the scratch track, which is muted. We've got the left and right guitar tracks and we've got the initial basic drum beat put in there. So the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to go on and we record the bass part for this song. Now this is really just a rough version of the song. I would come back in normally and take a lot more time, record everything. And in all honesty, this is only a very, very small part of the song just to show you the process that I go through. So let's go and add a new track now, which we're going to use for our bass. So I'm just going to scroll down the bottom. I'm just going to double click to insert a new track. And then I'm going to use the little shortcut icons that I've got on the top left hand side to color code this. And I'm just going to set this to be green for the bass. So I've now got my initial rough bass track ready to start working. So all I'm going to do is arm that for recording and set of monitoring on there. So I can now go in and record this and listen to exactly what I'm doing. So I'm going to go through and record this. It's going to be a DI, so there's nothing special about this. There's no effects on there, there's no compression, anything. It's straight into my interface, straight into Reaper, and recorded just so I can get that clean scratch track ready to start then changing the sound on there and getting it to sit inside the song mix. So let's do that now. Let's record the bass part. So there's a very, very rough bass track put into our piece of uh, piece of music. So the next thing I want to do now is get the bass roughly where I want it to be with the sound to sit roughly in the mix. So what I'm going to do is, like I usually do, and if you see my bass tutorial, uh, I'll link that up in the top corner again and in the description. We've already covered this kind of thing, but I'm going to go through it quite quickly to show you how I do it in the context of this recording. So I'm going to create two more tracks. And these are going to be for our bass. So I just turn off the monitoring. And I'm now ready just to sort of organize my bass setup. So what I'm going to do is bring this up. That's going to be our master. I'm going to indent this so we can parent these. So we've got everything now set up. So we've got the parent, which is going to be the bass master. And then we're going to have two other bass tracks. So let me just name these. So we're going to call this bass master. And we'll call this bass and we'll call this bass distorted so we've got all those set up now ready next thing I want to do is I'm going to duplicate this track because I don't need to double track the bass because it, I need it to be the same so all I'm going to do is control drag to get a duplicate an identical duplicate on the two tracks so we've now got our bass set up roughly where we want to be. So the next thing we're going to do is go in and apply some actual effects to this because we want to actually give it a bit more sound, a bit more body. Because at the moment, we've just got a completely DI signal. So if I just play that on its own, you can see how clean and uninteresting that is. So as you can hear, that is just a clean DI signal really really boring so and this is just the quick way of doing things we're going to come back in later on and we're going to look at this how we can actually configure the sounds ourselves but i'm going through how i would generally tend to sort of do a demo idea so i'm going to click to add an effect 
We're going to come to Tune Track and we're going to drag up an instance of Easy Mix. And if I bring that over, we're going to now go and choose a bass tone. So I'm going to come through and choose my bass. And I want to limit this to the three Guitar Gods expansion packs. And I'm going to have a look for a bass tone that I kind of like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solo that track out and I'm going to have a listen to what it sounds like with different tones. So I'm just going to go through and find one that I like. Okay, in this instance, I think I'm going to go for the Frederick clean bass. That's the, the bass player of Bashuga. So we're going to use that as the clean bass tone. So there's my first bass tone. Let me unsolo that and just solo the bass track. So the next thing I want to do is I want to put in a really distorted version. So I'm going to come to this and I'm going to come in, choose my effects again, add another instance of Easy Mix. And for this time, I'm going to come in to choose the bass. And we're going to do the same again, which are the three... Metal Gods packs, and the one that I'm looking for is Ryan Big Nasty Bass. There we go. Which is a really heavily overdriven bass tone, but when you mix the two together, it gives a real nice body. So I'm going to close that down and close this down. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play that back, and I'm going to play it back on its own, and I'm going to add the drums into it and the guitars back into it so you can see how it sits. Now, there's no EQing or mixing or anything going on at the moment. This is just the rough input, the DI signal being affected by just those effects. So let's have a listen. Okay, so now let's have a listen with the guitar and the drums put back in. So with that very, very rough, loose mix. So things are starting to come together now. Hopefully what you can hear is that the bass is now starting to fill out that low end where I've put the bass and the bass distorted together. You can see I've pulled the distorted bass back to about minus 20 dB just to give it a little bit of underlying distortion. I don't want that to be the most evident bass sound because that'll start to tend to get a bit too mid-rangey, a bit too sort of top-endy, and I just want that there to add an accent and a little bit of grunt to the bass itself. So we've kind of got roughly where I want it to be. So the next thing I want to do is I want to roughly go through and do some basic gain staging on the track. Because at the moment, the levels are all over the place and it's just starting to sound completely messy. So what I'm going to do is, because we're not talking about massive level changes here, I just want to tweak the actual plugin itself. So what I tend to do for this is I'll solo out individual tracks. So in this example, I'll solo out the guitar left. And I'll just come back to that. I'll open up the effect, which, if you remember from the first video, is an instance of aggression from Easy Mix. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to control that by using the output. And like I say, it's only a small amount of alteration, but it's enough that we can stop the levels from peaking. So let's take a look at before and take a look at the meter on the guitar left at the bottom section here in the mixer control panel, or take a look in the track control panel here. And then I'm going to dial it back just to show you. So I'm getting this to roughly around minus 18 dB. So I want this to sit before it starts to hit the yellow. I don't mind if it peaks in the yellow a little bit, but I don't want to go into there too much. So I'm going to show you that in the first track, and then I'll go through and do all the other tracks to bring them in line. <laughs>
So now I'm going to do exactly the same for the bass to make sure that sits in there. And we'll do the drums last because that's a little bit more complex on how to do it. It's not difficult, just takes a bit more time. So let's go and do the bass next. Okay, so now that we've done the bass, we've done the guitars, I'm now ready to move on to the drums. So I'm going to come back up. We're going to open up our instance of, in this example, Easy, Mix, uh, Easy Drummer. I'm going to open that up. And if I bring the UI in, you can see that if we go over to the mixer, we now have all of the channels of our drum setup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to universally lower all of these and then I'll tweak them if I need to for the kick and the bass drum and the toms and so on. So the easiest way to do that is to click on the first track, scroll over to the last track, hold the shift key down on your keyboard and click on the last track and that'll select all of those tracks. So now if I come up and choose any of the sliders, they'll all move in relation to each other. So what I can do is I can hit play, I can take a look at the drums, and then I can use the most important drums in this setup, which is going to be the kick and the snare, and use those to control the overall level, keeping the relationship between all of the other drums intact. And then if I want to or need to, I can fine-tune and tweak each individual piece of the kit through its own mixer setup. So let's take a look at doing that now. So we've now got the drum levels roughly where I want to be. So everything is kind of where I want to be. We pull it down, so now we've got plenty of headroom. So now what I'll do is I'll go in and fine tune the master tracks for things like the bass and so on, just to make sure that we've got a good overall rough mix with no peaks. So all I'm gonna do is shut that down and then I'm gonna take a listen to the track and I'm gonna adjust accordingly on the mixer itself this time to get my levels in the kind of ballpark where I want them to be for this rough demo and mix. So there we go. We're kind of where I want it to be. I've got everything roughly in the right place. I've got the level set very roughly. I would tweak a lot more, obviously, when we finished out into the EQ and the compression and so on. So that's where I'm going to end this video today. In the next part, we're going to take a look at the EQ and the compression to the individual parts, the two guitars, the bass, and then we're going to get ourselves into a really good position to start making sort of more fine-tuning changes to get this roughly where we want it to be to get that little bit more polished. We'll take a look at how we can apply effects to the master channel, how we can really boost those levels, clean up the mix itself, and we can look for any discrepancies in there. Again, we're going to be using Easy Mix to do this because it's very quick and very easy. And once we've done that, we're then going to swap out those guitar tones and we're going to create our own guitar tones. It's going to give us a bit more control than we have with Easy Mix. So I hope you found this video useful. I hope it's expanded upon the first part of this and it's given you a good idea of the process that I use to get rough demo tracks together. If you do enjoy this video, please hit that subscribe button below. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. Give it a thumbs down if you don't. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else covered on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. And until next time, happy mixing.